I have two facts for you. One, to survive, all human beings need food. And two, over 50% of the world's population live in cities. I'm here today to present a grand vision, a concept called the edible city. This is a concept which touches many areas such as politics, social welfare, health, and so on. And no, I'm not talking about making gingerbread houses. I'm talking about adding value to our cities by starting to produce and harvest food locally. I want us to have energy-efficient, smart-producing food systems all over town. Why, you might ask? Because, my friends, we are living at the edge of a tipping point in human history. Consider the facts I presented. Humans versus food versus cities. Today, roughly one-third of the world's population are working as farmers. They provide food not only for themselves, but of course also for the 50% of the world's population living in cities. These farmers, they are working mainly with conventional agriculture methods, driven by huge amounts of fossil fuel. Altogether, driving soil erosion, water depletion and deforestation to extreme levels. So, with all this in mind, I have a couple of questions for you. What will happen when this agricultural system starts to collapse? What will we do when we no longer can buy food in the supermarket? The Edible City is one of the solutions to the problems with food security, peak oil and climate change that we no doubt will face in the future. And whether these problems will hit hard in five or in 25 years, I do not know. But I am absolutely sure that we can start right now to minimize these problems by producing food locally where we live, in the cities. Now, sit back and relax in your chairs and close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Pretend that you are a bird flying high over your nearest sea, circling up in the sky. What do you see with those hawk eyes? Square buildings and straight roads? Well, imagine what it would be like if instead the buildings were clad with lush green. If on top of the roofs we had greenhouses, if every hospital and every school in this city had its own kitchen garden, if the parks were turned into highly productive food jungles. Open your eyes. This isn't just a futuristic vision. This is a realistic plan, because we have it all. We have the money, we have the people, we have the resources, we have the plants, and we have the technology. All the resources are there to start to create edible cities. We just need to be brave enough to use it. And we need to use it on a larger scale, because what I'm telling you now, with city gardening and growing stuff and having lush and green walls, well, that's already happening. It's been done by people all over the cities in our world. People who felt their heart beating, who went with their gut instincts, who went out and dug their hands in the soil and <laughs> smelt it, and they became city gardeners. They went out there and they started to produce food where they lived because they knew there was something good coming from it. And to make this bigger, to turn this over, to have it on a large scale, I know that we need a structure or a strategy. If I want my city where I live to be able to provide food for all its inhabitants, well, 
I want us to roll with something called permaculture. Permaculture is a design tool where you're bending the rules of nature without breaking them to provide space for both food production and human beings. You start out by observing and observing and observing for a long time. And then you analyze what you have observed, and in the end, you make a darn good design. I want us to design our cities for food production. So, what would it look like if we used permaculture? This is the avenue in Gothenburg. It's just an ordinary street, but with some uh, digging around and some fixing, it could turn into something much greener. So, bear in mind what I said about observing and permaculture. Well, I want to become a really, really great permaculture designer. And so I decided to start researching edible plants. And digging through the internet, museums, magazines, video clips, old people's minds, all the nerdy resources I could think of, well, what I came to realize in the end was this. There's an abundance of forgotten edible plants out there just waiting for me to come and pick them. I feel like the most lucky person on earth when I go out foraging in the city, stumbling upon unknown treasures of green gold, which I'm almost the only one today who can recognize as food. I love that happy, sneaky feeling of harvesting wild stuff, of biking off to work, stopping all over to pick my lunch. Such, such a great feeling. It's all about survival, really. Deep down, it's fulfilling my own human basic need of getting food. And after hosting city tours, where the topic has been city salad, I know that people around me, they are in need of this knowledge, too. They, too, are tired of going to the supermarket to buy imported vegetables. It's not fun anymore. So, if there are any politicians watching or hearing this while well, using the topic of food as a way of reaching out to people, it works magnificently. If you haven't started taking notes yet, well, bring out your pen and paper, because I don't want to keep all of this information to myself. This knowledge about what to eat, I want you to have it. Therefore, I proudly present you Clara's five favorites. All available to you within five minutes walking distance from our current location in central Gothenburg. As you can see on the screen, number one is lime trees. Lime trees can be found all over. They tend to grow leaves, of course, they're trees. And you can pick these leaves, and I'm telling you, once you eat one of them, you'll never go back to iceberg salad. This can be picked from early spring to late, late autumn. I even ate some yesterday. And the tea tree, as I said, will keep on regrowing more for you. So you don't need to be there planting anything. Just eat it. Number two, then, is one of our wild weeds called fat hen. This one is one of the pioneer plants. It's very good at picking up mineral, minerals and nutrients. Fat hen can be found in all places where people have been digging around. You go out, you pick the leaves, you eat it. It's like spinach. So you use it for pies or lasagnas or salads, whatever. And yes, as the name implies, you can also use it to fatten up your chickens. Also pigs, they love it. Number three is garlic mustard. Just taste the name, and you'll know what flavors to expect. If you crush the leaves gently, and you can smell the garlic, so there's no need to worry about picking the wrong plant. This one also grows all over. 
You can eat both the flowers and the leaves, and it blooms twice a year, so you will always have a nice, fresh supply of salad. It's sort of like rucola with the same sting. Moving on to number four. A plant which is an ornamental, ornamental one, often found in our gardens. I'm sure many of you recognize it. This one is called plantain lily, or hosta. It's a Latin name. This one, when it comes up in the springtime, it has like little devil's horns almost. You break them off, fry them up in some butter and salt and pepper on that, and it's like eating asparagus. And it's going to keep on growing more, just like the tree. It's also super delicious to make your own pesto from it. So you pick a bunch of leaves, take some of the purple flowers as well, some nuts, some oil, a bit of really strong good cheese, mix it up, and voila, you made your own locally produced pesto. No need to import it from Italy anymore. Least but not last, number five, black chokeberries. This is a hedge plant growing about two meters high, Super easy to go and pick the berries. So instead of buying goji berries from China, I pick and dry my own black choke berries, my own super berries. It's really, really tasty to add to your muesli or to sprinkle over a salad or something. And it's highly concentrated or filled with antioxidants. So this is really the new super berry. And as I said, grows all over town. So just go out and start to pick it. There you go. My five favorites. Are you still not convinced that you can go for it? Well, here's a show of me running around in Gothenburg, picking leaves. You see, you can make it really, really fast, even in a lunch break for 30 minutes. Pick leaves, put them in a bag, look around, even now in Gothenburg. This is a rainy day about a year ago. See, find it all over. Even mushrooms can be found. Super delicious. Remember always to rinse what you pick, of course, and then you want to present it really nicely so that your friends get all impressed and they too want to go out and pick their stuff. It's so easy. So to sum it up, my message to you is that, yes, we need to start producing food locally. And yes, we need to be more city gardeners. But before we go all bananas with redesigning and starting to dig around in our city, let's go out and harvest all the things which are already there, all the forgotten plants which are so tasty and so nutritious that it's beyond your imagination. Thank you so much for listening. I wish you all a happy hunting. <laughs>